Hello and welcome. What if I told you that a successful intercept does not require any information besides radar awareness? What if I told you that aspect, closure rate and so on can be completely unnecessary? And what if I told you that this technique is even easier than all of the ones taught at the various OCUs or RTUs out there? Interested? Then arm your aim nines because we're about to learn the magic of the sync Z turn. In modern days, in the DCS universe, the idea of gathering the target's information without a hard lock is common knowledge and a false privilege. Track while scan, various forms of range while search, and similar usually provide tracks or range, altitude, aspect, and so on. However, back in the 60s and the early 70s, most radars could not do that. Systems such as the APQ-120 simply returned whatever happened to be in the radar lobes, whether it be a coast, a mountain, or a target. A hard lock was necessary to obtain the additional information mentioned earlier. However, depending on the technological level of the opposition, a hard lock could alert the target that something spooky was going on. Therefore, the ability to position the fighter and gaining an advantage quietly, so to speak, is very valuable. Introducing the Sync Z turn, the first no radar lock on intercept discussed so far, easily applicable to any fighter, Phantom 2 included. Advantages this technique enables a stern conversion behind the target in almost all situations such as degraded GCI coverage, which is a non-factor in DCS at the moment, but hopefully it will be in the future. The radar is used to determine the intercept's parameters and therefore works both in day and night time and in inverse weather. As for all the intercepts that result in a conversion, it is handy for tanker rejoins and enables rear quarter AIM-9 employment and necessity when operating the older sidewinders. Contrary to the overtake, checkpoints based techniques and similar tech procedures, the sync Z turn requires little information besides speed advantage. The procedure as taught is already straightforward, but for the purposes of DCS and other games it can be narrowed down further to two logical blocks. Situation assessment, where the fighter assesses the cold side of the display and manoeuvres to place the bandit there. This generates lateral separation while decreasing the aspect angle and increasing the target aspect. Azimuth synchronization. The fighter maintains the target at a predefined ATA. Once the bank angle necessary to maintain such an azimuth angle reaches 30 degrees, it returns to zero ATA or pure pursuit and rolls behind the target. That's it pretty much. This clever technique takes full advantage of the procedures and topics discussed so far. In fact, to explain why it works, we need to recall the relations between angles, aspect, drift, HCA and cut, radar scope, hot and cold sides, etc. Before diving into the technicalities, let's see an example in cockpit without commentary. And by the way, I'm a terrible pilot, and I'm sure any average skilled one could do much better than me. On the other hand, this shows how simple and effective this technique is.
As you can see, all that's needed is radar awareness, and even without prior information about the target, the manoeuvre works well. Analysis Let's see how and why this technique works. This is important to respond to a bandit changing the geometry or gaining awareness. Situation assessment This procedure starts by assessing the target's parameters. As usual, the better the situational awareness, the greater the advantage, or the smaller the disadvantage. For instance, the radar can be used to determine range and elevation, which immediately translate into the target's altitude. The determination of the cold side of this display is necessary as the goal is creating a manoeuvring room to enable the stern conversion. For this purpose, the crew can zero the ATA by placing the target on the nose, thus allowing the drift to indicate the direction of passage and display sights. In particular, the crew should pay attention to the drift at ratio, which is greater the further the contact is from the collision antenna train angle, the kata. Moreover, as long as the cut is greater than zero, the target will always move away from the fighter, drifting away from the fighter and naturally increasing the target aspect or decreasing the aspect angle. If in a zero cut or 180 HCA situation, then both sides of the scope are cold and the Phantom's crew can choose their preferred side. Range Range deserves some consideration. If the range is greater than 30 nautical miles, the fighter can fly a collision course to minimise the intercept duration. Alternatively, similar to other intercept techniques already discussed, the crew can create room right away and then collision to capture the angles. However, given the lack of information, unless a radar lock is obtained, this option can drive the geometry off. It is important to remember that the shorter the range, the greater the required offset, since there is less time and conversely room for the fighter to increase the lateral separation. For sync Z turns at very short range, being aggressive with the sync value can be beneficial and worst case scenario lead to a slight overshoot, which is not necessarily bad. Generally speaking, if the crew lacks the bandit's information, the sync should never be lower than 45 degrees. Next, the target is placed on the cold side of the display. As discussed in the previous videos, a contact not on a collision course will drift on the scope, and the drift ratio increases as a function of range and V sub C, and this is precisely what the sync Z turn technique uses. The fighter, in fact, should maintain the target at a constant azimuth, applying stick to the left or right as required. As the range decreases, the angle relations become more pronounced and the drift increases, requiring a steeper bank angle. Initially, the bank angle necessary to maintain the synced azimuth may be almost close to zero. Later on, it increases exponentially rather than linearly. The cue to turn to pure pursuit is 30 degrees angle of bank. The turn towards the target's rear quarter deserves a more in-depth discussion. However, generally speaking, 45 degrees of bank angle should be okay. Nevertheless, V sub C and the phantom sp speed dictate the turning radius and its effectiveness. Therefore, if by assessing the closure the crew observes that they are intercepting a fast aircraft, then beginning the turn at 10 nautical miles is suggested. Otherwise, 7 is a solid option. That being said, DCS is a game with a vastly dishomogeneous audience. You can work out your own technique, for instance by modifying the sink angle or the angular bank of the conversion. Often, pulling a hard turn to pure pursuit will result in a less elegant but faster rollout behind the target. Additional examples Now that the basics of the Sync Z turn are more precise, let's review an example.
Conclusions The Sink Z Turn is a fantastic technique useful to seasoned and avid Nishio pilots alike. With only a few hours of practice, it can be learned and understood very well. Moreover, it applies to any aeroplane featuring a radar up, such as the Mirage F1. Although modern fighters equipped with track loss scan are equivalent and data like can use other procedures. Before wrapping this up, let's recap and add more features of the Sync Z turn to the items listed at the beginning of the video. Given the simplicity of this technique and the fact that only the synced azimuth is the only variable, comms between pilot and whistle are vastly reduced. For example, a simple Sync 45 left or right or port starboard is sufficient to initiate the Sync Z turn. This is where the procedure's name originates from. The APQ-120, the AUG-9 and other radar systems are affected by jamming. In DCS, they can still angle track the source of the emissions, thus providing azimuth and elevation. The Sync Z turn can then be successfully employed against such a target, using a jabbing strobe as a reference, until the range decreases below burn-through. The Sync Z turn can be used with or without radar lock-on. In DCS, where RWS are often over-precise, Avoiding a lock-on can benefit the fighter, especially against a human opponent. Moreover, a smart wizzle can intermittently paint the bandit just enough to monitor the progression of the intercept, thus denying even more awareness to the target. Changes in geometry, symptoms of a bandit becoming aware or manoeuvring, are immediately observable by changes in terms of drift and the related bank angle needed to continue the sync as turn. By assessing whether the angles are increasing or decreasing, Phantom's crew can determine whether the bandit is turning hot or cold. Thanks for watching and take care.